Prince William is rightfully furious about the allegations surrounding his wife, Catherine, Princess of Wales. But we know William cannot do anything about this release if he is to follow the family motto of never complain, never explain. However, someone can do something, but will they? What is the end game to this end game drama? Before we get into it, please remember to subscribe to help our crown family blossom. Let's get to the crunch. Catherine, the Princess of Wales and King Charles have been accused of being racist in the Dutch copy of Endgame, but who exactly accused them? The writer, Umid Scooby, claims to have never written the names in any versions of his book. While simultaneously seeming rather happy with the media circus surrounding his book launch, not at all regretful that the names were released. He suggests that the names must have been added by someone before it hit the printing press in the Kingdom of the Netherlands. So the logical assumption would be that it was the person responsible for translating the manuscript. That's who Omid was attempting to implicate, but he underestimated the power of the Dutch women because Saskia Peters, the translator for the Dutch version of Endgame, has now come forward publicly to state that when she received the English manuscript, it contains the names of the alleged racists there in black and white. Oh dear, Mr. Scobie, you weren't expecting that move, were you? Who shall we try to blame next? After that backfired fairly quickly, and with the heat on him, it was announced that one of Scobie's agents sent the wrong copy to the Dutch translator. An old version of the book was allegedly sent, a version that had not been screened by lawyers to make sure that nobody could sue. Well, isn't that odd, as Scobie explicitly stated that he had never written the names in any versions of his book. Is it just me, or is it starting to get more and more difficult to believe any words that come out of little Scobie's big mouth? The more you listen to him, it really does seem like he feels no remorse for the details of the royal racists being leaked. Equally, allegations that secret meetings between the Sussexes and Scobie were held at an LA hotel before the release of his book. Could this mean that they were aware that these details would be leaked and maybe even they gave SCOBY their blessings? Now, these allegations of these secret hotel meetings have yet to be confirmed, but if they were attempting to leave no trace of the collaboration between them and SCOBY on this book endgame, then meeting in a secret hotel would be the way forward. No email trace, no phone call trace. However, maybe some CCTV traces. Hopefully, there will be more information released on this soon. From the Royals, of course, I wouldn't expect anything other than radio silence with the occasional subtle dig that's easier to miss than a mouse in the night. Well, luckily for us, we got our first very subtle dig when King Charles was making a speech at the COP28 summit. After all, ladies and gentlemen, in 2050, our grandchildren won't be asking what we said, they will be living with the consequences of what we did or didn't do. Oh, the diplomacy. I just love it. It's like something out of a Jane Austen novel. This level of subtlety deserves a standing ovation. Hopefully we'll have more recollections may vary quotes hitting our screen soon. Bravo, King Charles. But across the pond, Mr... I love to hate the press, but not as much as I love to sue them. Prince Harry has remained unusually tight-lipped on this topic so far. For someone who hates journalists as much as he does... So you hate journalists? That's right! And now you wrote a book that reports on the lives of the royal family? Right! So you're a journalist? Surely this is an opportunity to come forward and at least weigh in on what's happened. As much as he hates journalists, he does love talking to them and ghostwriters and Netflix producers about every inner detail of his family. So will he come forward now that two people that he allegedly cares about, two people that he used to be extremely close to, and two people that he allegedly wants to rekindle that close relationship with, have been publicly outed as being racists? Will he use this as an opportunity to say, here's what really happened? 
After all, he was there with them when they made the alleged racist allegations. Meghan Markle was not at this now world-renowned conversation. Only Harry knows what questions were asked. So will he come forward with the truth? These two people are not racists. If this release of information was intentionally done with the consent of the Sussexes, then it has usually backfired as they have now been excluded from the biggest royal wedding of next year. The Duke of Westminster will be tying the knot, who had been a very close friend of Harry's when he was younger. Whether or not the drama was instigated by the Sussexes, it certainly has put a nail in the coffin with regards to them ever being invited to the UK for Christmas. In fact, any big event on the social calendar, unless they come forward and dispute the claims. Which they essentially made in the first place, so it's unlikely. He has options here to claw his way back into the royal fold if he plays his cards right. If he stays silent, however, he will look guilty. He and Meghan will look like they are happy for this information to come out. And that's what I would place my money on. If they say nothing, then it proves just how toxic they are. Imagine a relationship in which one partner constantly tries to lower the status of the other and gloats if their plan takes hold. That's the stereotype of a toxic relationship and that is what we see here between the Sussexes and the royal family. They seem to have done everything they possibly can to overthrow everything the royal family has built and the entire monarchy's reputation. When something negative comes out about Meghan in the press, I highly doubt Catherine Princess of Wales is rocking in her chair, cackling with joy. However, due to the smug way in which Meghan has attempted time and time again to throw the princess under the bus in front of the media, I can very much imagine her at this moment beaming with bitter joy. Which of these two women's characters can we really assume is likely to be racist? Someone who gloats every time she stabs her family in the back or someone who genuinely shows deep care and compassion for her people? The royal family has said to be contemplating their next move, but it is very difficult to guess what that will be. However, one thing that we can count on is when the Sussexes go low, the royal family goes high. I can't wait to see what they come up with. Someone said this is not about racism, it's about Meghan's jealousy and envy of the Princess of Wales. I cannot disagree with what you're saying there. That is what she portrays Meghan when she talks about Catherine, Princess of Wales. When you're having an intimate conversation with Oprah in front of millions of people and you tell her that your sister-in-law actually made you cry, even though your sister-in-law has never come out and accused you of making her cry, the whole thing seems very, very petty. Did you make Kate cry? No. No, the reverse happened. A few days before the wedding, she was upset about something and it made me cry and it really hurt my feelings it's very difficult for me to have respect for someone who is willing to talk like a three-year-old mommy she made me cry but you're doing it as an adult It is, it is so embarrassing <laughs> for her. It's embarrassing for Megan. She should be embarrassed. Who does this? She is a grown woman. It's okay to cry, of course it is, but don't then go and tell on the person who's made you cry. And in fact, I don't believe the story in the first place. So not only are you telling the world that somebody made you cry, but you're also telling fibbies. Someone else said, why does anyone think Harry is better morally than Meghan? It's his family that he's dragging through the gutter with no remorse. Stop asking Harry to step up. He's the worst. This is one of these points that completely conflicts me because I did used to really like Harry. I did like Meghan very, very much back when they first got married before we knew anything about her. Um, but Harry... I think we're all kind of fond of Harry in a bizarre way because we watched him we watched him growing up. But I can understand where you're coming from because even for me there is a line and he is definitely he has definitely crossed it. It's just 
that sentimental part of me and I think quite a lot of Britain where we remember him as the old Harry before he became the new worse version of Harry. Someone else said, feel sorry for Charles. He's an elderly man who's being subjected to ongoing abuse from his deplorable son and daughter-in-law. Don't believe he's racist whatsoever. So, of course, agreeing with the previous person here, you think Harry is deplorable. And I do think he is as well, as many, many people do. What he has done here is is inexcusable and it would be for any for any son towards any father or sister-in-law. Can he now win his way back into our hearts? I don't know. Has he gone too far? I think you might be right, actually. I think, in hindsight, rubbish Harry has completely overshadowed the nice little Harry that we used to know. And we just need to remember that people change sometimes. Someone else said, Scobie deserves to be sued. How stupid does he think we are? Translators translate actual content. They don't create it. This particular translator as well, she's she has a very good reputation. She has translated hundreds of books and never added any names in there. So also something someone did point out is how could she have known the names of the alleged royal racists? Because she's just a translator. Scobie was the one who knew the names. So, I mean, she could have placed any... If she wanted to add two names and make a giant scandal, she could have added any name. She could have added Camilla. She could have added Prince William. But she just happened to allegedly add the two names of the actual racists and Scobie doesn't think this is at all bizarre. The whole thing is very weird. The more you hear him talking about it, the more you cannot help but think he's talking a load of rubbish. And of course, it was him that did it. Give this video a like if you think Meghan had something to do with these royal names being released. And subscribe to help the Crown family blossom. See you down in the comments.